Well, it seems that the old saying is true. Vampires are addictive. Oh wait, is it humans that are addictive? I forget. But either way, the truth remains that the legendary blood-sucking enigmas of mythology and folklore have well and truly found a fondness in our cultural hearts, much like their fear of steaks of the wooden variety. In part one of this particular cinematic list, we managed to delve through some of the most beautifully shot horror movies of recent times, as it seems that a thirst for drinking blood and looking good whilst doing so often goes hand in hand. But as we all know, there's many, many more where that came from. So, let's take a look, shall we? Hello, horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top five scariest vampire movies of all time, part two. Or the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was of course from 2008's Let the Right One In, which took the number one spot on our part one of this list, and rightfully so, because it's a fantastic horror movie, never mind a vampire movie, and I'll use any excuse I can get to get some footage in for this list. And it leads us to an interesting point, because many of the comments in our previous video pointed out how fervent the fandom of vampirism is amongst you horror fans, and you weren't exactly overjoyed that we'd missed a few entries out, to say the least. But hey, you know what they say about vampires, right? It's all about taste. Kicking off. At number five, Afflicted, 2013. <laughs> 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 And you know what? This film is actually awesome, and you'll be pleasantly surprised that it's perhaps the best found footage vampire horror movie ever made. I mean, not like there are a lot of them. Anyway, maybe like three. But nevertheless, Afflicted manages to take the otherwise worn out found footage genre, as well as the long standing done to death vampire genre, and somehow still manage to create a wholeheartedly original and exhilarating horror experience. And on top of that, it's Canadian. Written and directed by Derek Lee and Cliff Prouse in their directorial feature film debut, Afflicted also stars the two filmmakers in their respective namesakes, as two best friends travelling the world filming a web series of their travels. It's quickly revealed that the trip is actually a bucket list, as Derek has a tragic genetic brain condition that could cause his death at any moment, and the trip is his last wish, to spend time exploring the planet with his best friend. Of course though, as is the best laid plans of vampires and men, things often go awry, and Derek contracts a mysterious disease which of course turns out to be vampirism. Afflicted Afflicted doesn't exactly take any precautions going into this horror onslaught, and although oftentimes the action can water down the genuinely fear inducing moments, the one thing that carries through in this movie is its unstoppable energy. Start to finish, it's literally as if the life and undeath of vampirism is the very lifeblood of this film, coursing through its veins, seeking the next helpless horror fan to feast on. It's a strange mix of both new and old, but even stranger still, it actually works incredibly well. Next up at number four. Four only lovers left alive, 2013. What is that? Oh, negative. That's delicious. Blood on a stick. Now, quite a few of you called for this film to appear on our next list, and rightfully so, because just like with Afflicted, it seems that 2013 was the year for surprisingly creative vampire horror that seemingly reignited the genre in a strange new way. It's important to note that Only Lovers Left Alive isn't a horror film in the conventional sense, or even in the traditional sense, because it relies on an entirely new perspective to fill the spaces of its horror. And yeah, who would have thought it? Vampire nihilism. V vampiralism. Maybe it'll catch on. Written and directed by Jim Jarmusch, the film stars Tom Hiddleston and Tilda Swinton as Adam and Eve, two immortal vampires that have lived countless lives across the ages as musicians, poets, scientists, and purveyors of all the mysteries of existence. In the 21st century, though, things are a little bit different, and Adam and Eve both live in an overwhelmingly different age, where the blood of the human population has been grossly contaminated by the modern environment. This film the film covers many, many themes and it effortlessly says a lot about the human condition without saying much at all, whilst also capturing that ageless enigma of bloodthirsty vampires and the strange, alluring beauty that they often permeate. Again, at first glance, the traditional horror of this film isn't easy to pick out, but instead it manages to give a much needed breath of life into the genre, whilst offering insight into the terrifying existential implications of living forever and the price that comes with it. Also, it's reminiscent of 1983's The Hunger, starring David David Bowie, Catherine Deneuve and Susan Sarandon, which would have made this list, but yeah, I don't think YouTube would like it. Coming in at number 3, Thirst, 2009.
And again, you may be sensing a bit of a pattern here because much like with our previous two entries, 2009's Korean horror flick Thirst isn't at all a conventional vampire horror, but instead a frightfully original portrayal of vampirism that uses the immortal affliction to allude to a much more human addiction. Saying that though, that's not to say that this film doesn't have its fair share of gut-wrenching gore and all the bright bursts of blood that you'd expect a vampire horror to carry, because it does, and it delivers it in spades in the typical Korean horror cinema fashion. Written and directed by Park Chan-wook, the man responsible for the incredible 2003 thriller Old Boy, Thirst has all the trials and trappings that we've come to expect with modern vampire cinema, and yet still manages to execute them in a frightfully original manner. It tells the tale of Sang Hyun, a Catholic priest renowned as a good noble man in his small town parish. Despite his unwavering faith though, he is afflicted by a deep insatiable sadness and a loneliness that he cannot fill, and so volunteers to participate in a medical experiment to find a vaccine for the deadly Emmanuel virus. Of course we know how that usually goes, and Sang Hyun quickly morphs into a virulent, vigorous, viral vampire. But the thirst doesn't end there, and for those of you going into this movie with zero expectations, you'll discover more charm than expected, as well as genuine, fear-inducing moments of complete and utter shock and awe. It's strange because in places this film is endearing and warm and fuzzy, and in others it's batch crazy and full of gut-wrenching horror. It walks a fine line, strikes a fine balance, and still manages to be an incredibly original depiction of vampires. Great movie. Swinging in at number two, Near Dark, 1987. Oh. And now, listen. Guys, I get it, the vast majority of you absolutely love 1987's Near Dark and often ranked it as number one on your list of scariest vampire movies of all time. And yeah, I agree with you because Near Dark is an incredibly entertaining horror experience and in my eyes it's a more horror palatable version of The Lost Boys, although Near Dark is often forgotten in the shadow of The Lost Boys success. Not to take anything away from The Lost Boys because it is awesome. The thing is though, both of these films are very much a product of their time and when it comes to late 80s nostalgia, the horror experience was often mired in fragments of genre. A little action thriller here, a little dark comedy there, and as is the case of Near Dark, a little bit of neo-western horror gore, which sounds strange, but hey, it works. Nevertheless, I hear you and consider this number two spot a worthy fan placement that all you horror fanatics have made happen. Good job, guys. Near Dark, directed by Catherine Bigelow and also written by herself and Eric Red, tells the tale of a group of nomadic American vampires roaming the small rural towns of Midwestern America. Despite having a relatively unknown cast at the time, more importantly, Near Dark has Bill Paxton in one of his most well-delivered roles in horror history as he plays Severin, an immortal vampire with a gutter mouth and a thirst for bar brawling. It also stars Lance Henriksen as the wizened, grizzled leader of their merry band of vampires and shows the lengths that immortal, bloodthirsty murderers will go to to stay alive on the open road. It's essentially Roadhouse meets The Lost Boys, and because of that, it's awesome. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, Salem's Lot, 1979. Okay guys, I'm gonna level with you. The only reason that this entry didn't make part one of this list is because, as I explained, it's technically a TV miniseries, and much like 1990's It, it doesn't hit the parameters of the term movie. But you know what? What the hell? Throw me out the window like little Ralphie Glick, forget I ever said anything, and give Toby Hooper's legendary 1979 miniseries the credit it deserves, and stick it at our number one spot for the scariest vampire movie ever made, because it is exactly that. We'll just forget the fact that it was released in two parts. Hey. Whatever, that's fine by me. I remember the first time I accidentally caught a glimpse of that bedroom window scene as a kid, and I was so incredibly terrified that it took me many years after that to even realize it was a story about vampires. I just thought it was about horrifying children in pajamas floating through the air, and I wasn't about to watch a feature length rerun of that. But obviously, as I got older and finally had the courage to read the original Stephen King novel of the same name, it was evident that Salem's Lot was perhaps the greatest fictional depiction of vampires in anything, really. Because here's the thing it manages to strike an 
incredibly delicate balance. And it's a balance Stephen King intended that Toby Hooper also managed to capture in the TV miniseries. It gives all the credit to the horror forefathers that predate it. The classic image of Barlow being shipped in a steel crate by his familiar Straker. Teeth, pale skin, blood sucking Dracula. The whole nine yards. But somehow it manages to maintain itself as an entirely original creation of horror. There's nothing quite like the vampires of Salem's Lot. They're familiar, but they're also strange and remote and entirely different creation. We don't need to talk about how good Toby Hooper's 1979 version of Salem's Lot is. Just watch it. It's horror mastery. And I hate to sound like a blackguard, but they don't make them like that anymore, do they? Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our part two for the top five scariest vampire movies of all time. Whew, that was a tough list, and I hope I've managed to sate your vampire thirst for quite some time. We'll see how it goes, I'm sure. But on that note, why don't you let us know your thoughts as well as any choice remaining picks down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's take a quick look at some of your more entertaining edifications from part one of this particular list. First up, Coltira Meme Weaver says, I love vampires. I also love garlic, though. Whew, wow. Well, that's a risky game you're playing. That's also a pretty tough choice, actually. Immortality or garlic? Eh. I think I'd stick with garlic. Anyway, on that note, just sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You'll be watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.